Just wanted to um, show the method I use for suspect cam timing problems. This is the um, Explorer No Start yesterday. It was um, towed in on Friday. This is a cranking compression waveform, so we don't see we don't see much of the intake event happening here. But we've got a very very pronounced upward rise there where the little point is exhaust valve open event very deep pocket for a cranking compression waveform it's getting down to about um, ten and a half inches of vacuum we just grab 720 degrees this is not a, a good example because the engine RPM was actually changing pretty rapidly during the crank so you can see that in our, our peak to peak points there but this is still a good drive just for, for a bit of play so if we just grab the grab the point there you can s see that our ignition event happened pretty close to top dead centre so igni ignition timing was was not upset obviously the cam timing was what was out so our injection event was taking place at the wrong time <coughs> excuse me so if we grab grab that image copy it to clipboard and we load it up in the compression program pull up our cursors we mark out 720 degrees we can see if we wanted to, you can see the uh, our ignition ev event happened oh, pretty pretty close to top dead centre, so not great, but it's it's where it should be roughly. What we've got here is um, the ability to to mark out our intake valve opening and closing, our exhaust valve opening and closing events. We've just got a a default setting there, which is. On a standard non-VVT system, that that usually comes pretty close to the money. It, you can put any values into these boxes you like. So if you had the vehicle specifications, you could pump them in. And then we pull up the marker flags. The exhaust valve open event should have taken place roughly here. That's when we should have started to see the climb. As the exhaust valve opens, the cylinder pressure comes back to atmospheric pressure. As you can see, it's happened quite late here. We can, um, just for argument's sake, we could pull out two cursors and mark that out, and we can see that it is roughly 40 degrees late. But that's just a bit of play. If you want to get a little bit more accurate, we can get rid of that one. So this is a, um, reference waveform that I was able to get a hold of. So if we mark out 720 degrees again, peak to peak, two crank revolutions. What we want to do is drag our cursors out and mark out 720. We take that value. This is our reference waveform side. So we add our time in milliseconds that it's taken for a revolution. And we move this cursor over to our cam position marker. We go for our signature point. You can pick any point, but I, I, I find it's easiest to go off our signature point there. So we've got 13.6. Now if we open up our suspect one, this is a cranking one, so the, the times are going to be a lot larger. So we grab our, our 720. Mark out our peak to peak again. Give our signature. So we're looking at 1084. Move this over here to our camshaft. And we've got 159. Can calculate that. And our suspect waveform is 41 degrees out of sync. That shows a bit of our working out. So our reference waveform shows us 
it was it was at o idle. You can see my one was was cranking RPM of 111. That shows you measurement degrees per millisecond, the reference marker location, and there's our 41. So that's how I go about it. It's um, always a lot easier to just grab the transducer first and I find opening up in my the um, compression waveform viewer marking out the flag sometimes helps but I suppose when you've got to get accurate results you need to need to resort to something something a little bit more precise like the, the cam position sensor. I thought I'd just share that. How do you guys do it? See ya.